All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to be looking at learning objective two, which is discuss the presidential plan of reconstruction and show how its weaknesses led to the congressional plan for reconstruction. All right, so this guy right here in 1863, um, let me get you the exact date, December 8th, issued what would be known as the presidential plan for reconstruction. So while the... Um, Civil War is still going on. He's beginning to make plans for Reconstruction. So the objective of Lincoln's plan was to get the people uh, from the seceded states back into their normal relations with the federal government as quickly as possible. The tool Lincoln was um, going to use uh, was his presidential pardon to achieve these ends. So Lincoln's main plan was to basically preserve the Union at any costs, right? Again, what he's most worried about is that as the victor, there are going to be many people in the North want, wanting and seeking a pound of flesh to really rub the South's nose in it. He understands, as someone who appreciates history, that this is only probably going to lead to future conflict. So he wants to preserve the Union. But for um, a lot of people in Congress and a lot of people that were concerned about the, the entire merits of the war, especially um, its aspect of ending slavery, they're very worried that it's just going to go back to business as usual in the South just under another name. Maybe slavery might be illegal, but uh, there are other ways of getting people to do work for free. Um, um, besides having institutionalized slavery, as we'll see with the Black Codes. Um, so what's going to happen is um, he's going to issue his 10% plan. So let's take a look at that. So what we have with Abraham Lincoln's 10% plan is that uh, all states must abolish uh, slavery, uh, which is the uh, which was made possible through the 13th Amendment, which was ratified in 1865. All it took for states to be brought back into the Union was a 10% of voters to take a loyalty oath, meaning basically they promised never to secede from the Union or to rebel against the Union, the United States. When I say Union, that just means the entire United States, right? Which, under Lincoln's plan, includes the South. Um, Tennessee, Arkansas, Louisiana... Uh, complied, but later they're going to be re this whole idea is going to be rejected by Congress. But those were the ones that were brought into the Union by Lincoln. The objections to this plan was it was an excessive use of presidential power, and this is again from the perspective of people like Thaddeus Stevens. Um, and there were no provisions for freed men, people that were newly freed by the slaves, which is going to be a problem because uh, the, st the South, even though that slavery is abolished by the 13th Amendment, is going to be putting in what are called um, black codes, which are really going to restrict uh, newly freed people's uh, rights in many ways. Um, the uh, congressional leaders had a plan of their own. Uh, which carefully retained control of the reconstruction process in Congress's hands, obviously. Uh, and this is going to come into play after Lincoln's assassination in 1865, right? The, the problem for Congress is that Lincoln has a lot of political capital, right? He's the guy who won the Civil War. But when Johnson comes into office, uh, this guy has a number of problems that we'll take a look at in a second that Congress is, is really going to be able to push back against presidential reconstruction because Johnson is going to adopt a lot of the same ideas that Lincoln had. So Andrew Johnson's rise to the presidency drastically altered the political situation uh, during Reconstruction. Um, although, like Lincoln, he viewed the restoration of the southern states as a presidential, not a um, congressional reconstruction uh, function of how it should proceed. Johnson uh, was a war Democrat. So again, Lincoln was a Republican, um, and he's a Democrat um, from a seceded state. He was placed on the same ticket as Lincoln in 1864 for Lincoln's second term to emphasize the unionism of the Republican Party, right? To say that this is not a war to punish the South, basically. So Johnson had no personal following with the American people, uh, 
either in the south or in the north was his first problem. Nor did he have the prestige of Lincoln, who was the guy who won the war. So he has no um, political capital, as it's referred to. So Johnson, again, he's going to agree with much of what uh, Lincoln was going to establish uh, under his 10% plan, his so-called presidential 10% plan. Uh, he's going to adopt a lot of that, but he's just going to admit the 10% plan and bring in everything else. His main, um, he had two objectives, union, that is to bring the union back together as quickly as possible, and freedom for the slaves, right? Although um, that would be the extent he would offer uh, these newly, newly freed people. Uh, he, like Lincoln, never subscribed to the radicals' demand for equality of newly freed people in the South. So on May 29th of 1865, Johnson announced his policy on two basic principles of Reconstruction. One, pardon and amnesty and Reconstruction procedure. So as with Lincoln's proclamation on December 8th of 1863, a limited pardon was extended to, uh, extended which excluded various classes, uh, such as those who held uh, Sil, uh, held civil office under the Confederate States of America, those states that had ceded from the Union, um, and those who had mistreated prisoners. Uh, Johnson also excluded those Southerners who, whose taxable property exceeded $20,000. So to those e exempted from the general pardon by Johnson, there remained the possibility of special pardon by petition. And much of Johnson's time was occupied in gaining uh, and granting the thousands and thousands of these special pardons. In fact, throughout his administration, Johnson granted pardons to former Confederates in wholesale lots and even replaced several uh, district military commanders whose radical sympathies offended them. During his three years in office, Johnson uh, proclaimed three executive amnesties, each more liberal than the former. As one of his last acts uh, um, in office on December 25th of 1868, uh, Johnson proclaimed um, was an unconstitutional uh, pardon for all Southerners, including Jefferson Davis, Jefferson Davis being the former Confederate States of America's president. So by December of 1865, all regular civil administrations within every single state except Texas um, was back in, in basically power, right? So all the states were back within the Union, except for, again for Texas. Johnson's purpose was to return the American system to normal. The process involved uh, direct personal cooperation between Johnson and the leaders of state organizations in the South. Southern delegations conferred with Johnson in person, acquainting him with local conditions, presenting unforeseen problems, uh, and receiving his direct pledges of reconciliation. So he's regularly meeting with state officials um, as they're being brought back into the Union. In conclusion, the ease and speed with, uh, um, with which Reconstruction was taking place ex excited distrust in the North in three main areas. First, every one of the Southern state conventions rejected Lincoln's uh, and Johnson suggested that the vote be extended uh, to well to the, to few well-educated um, African Americans. Lincoln and Johnson did nothing uh, to force this issue, though. The second problem um, occurred only during uh, Johnson's administration that. Uh, when many ex-Confederate leaders were elected to office to restore uh, the state governments, uh, Southern whites chose to um, chose to office the natural leaders of the, the of the section of men and who had prominent um, who were prominent in the military or civil service of the Confederate States of America. Again, the former country that was set up to rebel against the United States to break away from the Union. So, for example. Uh, the legislature of Georgia elected 
as their United States Senator, Alexander Stevens, who was the Vice President of the former Confederate States of America. Congress's final concern was the allowance by Johnson of a series of laws called the Black Codes. Uh, these were passed throughout the South that had restricted black people to basically second-class citizenship. So that's basically it for Learning Objective 2. Under both, again, under both Lincoln and Johnson, the main objective is to bring the South back into the Union uh, as seamlessly as possible, right? So when we look at Learning Objective 3, what we're going to look at is uh, Congressional Reconstruction uh, pushback against Lincoln and then Johnson. And when under Johnson, Congress is going to able to take over the process of Reconstruction for a number of years. And we'll look at that in detail in the next learning objective. See you there.